Alright, so we've imported our media and we're gonna name those whatever. So they're not just a mess of numbers. Alright, so dub double click on one of those and we'll see that comes up in the in the uh, slug view here. And uh, this slug view, there's several ways to work with it. It's really just an area where we prepare our clip for our project, for inserting it into our project. And uh, to this thing's called a scrubber, and we just sort of use it just to hold down the mouse and, and scroll left to right, and you can see that just sort of scrubs through at, at whatever speed that you move the mouse at through your clip, so you can sort of have a quick look at it. Uh, I prefer just dragging the playhead around, I find that just as good. Uh, so what we want to do is set our in and out points and this is a foreign concept to the iMovie people because uh, we don't really do that in iMovie, we just sort of chop it off and delete it which is not a good thing for a lot of reasons, it, it is an easy way of dealing with footage but it it's not really good because you lose your footage, it's in the trash, it's disappeared you know you change your mind later, you want something back you're in trouble, it's not a good way to work so in and out points are really good and uh, Final Cut uses those and and how they work is we find that we find the in point or the point that we want to start our footage uh, we find it with the playhead and then we select these buttons here which are the in and out point buttons so we we select the in one and you see that the in point has been marked so that's where your clip's going to start all this footage behind doesn't get deleted or anything it just it just stays in your browser area here and you can grab it again grab another piece of it whenever you want but for the purpose of what we're dragging into the project that's your in point and uh, we'll select an out point so there same thing down here click on your out and uh, in and out can also be set by hitting the keyboard letter I or O for out and um, it's an, another way to do it, it's a lot quicker Anyway, um, there's your play button obviously, and this button here will actually just play from your in point to your out point, so you can just watch what's going on and uh, make sure you're happy with it. So we're happy with that, and we want to import that into our main project. So how we do that is the good old Macintosh, click click and drag, and uh, drag it over to our canvas here, and we can see that this menu comes up. So we can either insert that normally or insert with a transition which we might want to do but for now we'll just insert and you'll see that's that's popped itself into our timeline and anytime you see a red line here it means that something needs to be rendered for whatever reason uh, you don't really need to explain the reason just uh, just do do yourself a favor and render it will you so how we do that is uh, we go up to the sequence menu and just select render all and that will render everything in your project audio and visual if we want to just render a single part of the project that works a little differently and we usually just go down and select it individually by just highlighting it and uh, go up to the U sequence menu I'll wait till this is finished so I can show you you just select one part of your project, go to your sequence menu and hit render selection it's a bit quicker if you just want to see that part Anyway, so we've got our we've got our little project here, very small, and that's in our timeline. We can continue to to insert things into that, and uh, that's really something for another lesson. But the point really here was to explain what this canvas view was, and I don't know if I've done that, but uh, you know, hopefully you're getting some of the terminology or, or something is getting through to your small brains <laughs> yeah um, mm. alright the final piece of the interface here we've got the audio meter and uh, the audio meter box has the levels of our audio from both of the channels and there w you can see them here visually and uh, when we have actual audio in there you'll be able to see that um, sometimes these will peak the audio will go into the red and we just want to lower the audio on that when that happens sort of standard stuff anyway the other thing is the toolbox here which uh, is basically our main interaction that we have with the timeline so uh, 
yeah, we'll get into that later. That you can you do things like cut with the razor blade tool. You'll cut your clip up, and there'll be slip edits and roll edits and that sort of thing. Different sorts of edits you can do. And these, when you hold down the button, click and hold, you'll get different options as well. There's so much there, but yeah, this is vital to our editing process. Anyway, that's your basic interface, and we will go through more on another video. That's just a quick overview of what we're working with. And of course, there's much more, more than you can ever imagine to this program. I'll catch you on the next one of these things, and stay with us, and stay tuned, because uh, there's going to be more. There's going to be more coming. And if you've gained nothing from this, which is likely, uh, just tune out, tune out. Find someone else who's, who's doing this better than I am, is my uh, recommendation there. Cheers.